You um, have a very interesting story. I mean, you've, you've ascended to this plight with your hard work, but you come from a family of, of advocates and, and, and people working for social justice in the political sphere and outside of that. Um, can you share with people? Um, you, your father is the supervisor, Mark Ridley Thomas. Oh, yes. your, your mother is Avis, who's yeah. worked in, in, in many a, um, aspects in the community and yeah. also um, um, for, for the city. Yeah. Tell us about you know growing up under them and their leadership, but also that kind of guiding you to this. It's where a you grounding. Are. It's a grounding that's unique. My family came to Los Angeles in 1922 before mm. the great migration started. It was a, one of the earlier ways in LA history of those who came from the South for economic opportunity. Hmm. That was the Thomas family. They located themselves on the east side. They were members of St. Paul Baptist Church. Hmm. They uh, were members of Mount Moriah Baptist Church and then one of my uncles, Eugene Thomas, started a newspaper and a church, Love of God Missionary Baptist Church. ACC Church and Community News. Wow. His brother, John B. Thomas, was a prize fighter. Hmm. Uh, he was a contender for a featherweight championship in the 1940s wow. or 50s. And he had a liquor distributorship. Hmm. He was a small businessman. And then he became one of the early African-American boxing referees. Wow. And okay. he parlayed his career uh, in uh, that to own properties. Hmm. They were honestly, they and their parents, Clifton hmm. and uh, Sylvia Thomas, were the prominent patriarch and hmm. matriarch of our family, affectionately known as Mama Sylvia and Papa <laughs> Cliff. Okay. And from there, uh, my grandmother Ruby and my father Mark uh, 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 traced their roots. So I'm a third, almost the third generation born, fourth generation lived Angelino. Wow. And that, I think, means a great deal mm -hmm. in uh, how I view the world. The Ridleys, my mother's side of the family, came from Louisiana in nineteen in the early 1950s, about 1952, mm -hmm. lived on the east side as well. Everybody went to uh, Jeff mm -hmm. until my mother went to Fremont. My father went to Manuel. Mm -hmm. uh, when they graduated from high school, they had opportunities to work. They decided to go to college. My mother to... Uh, Mills College in Oakland. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, early 1970s, yeah. 1972 to be exact. So mm -hmm. black power is yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah. Nixon is president. Uh, Dr. King is dead. Mm -hmm. uh, Bobby Kennedy is dead. JFK is dead. Mm -hmm. Where is the new leadership? Mm -hmm. Affirmative action just beginning. Mm -hmm. um, so they were there at the time when popular move was swinging from a protest and organized to economics mm. and right before Reaganomics where greed mm. became good and yeah. might was right and Wall Street was everything. Mm. So they were in a unique space and they mm. stayed rooted in LA and they organized, activated, trained themselves. They both got graduate education, both of my parents. Our family continued to grow and our, our cousins and extended family continued mm. to grow. And um, thank uh, goodness that they uh, got pregnant with my <laughs> brother and I in the year that my father was a contender after right. serving the SCLC for uh, many years. I think it had been eight years at that time right. as the executive director. He was a contender for school board. <laughs> um, and he was running against the incumbent school board president. Okay. Um, uh, and he lost that election. Okay. Uh, but I'd like to think if I'd been able to walk a few precincts, <laughs> but I was in rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So by 1991, uh, with the help of a gentleman named Danny Bakewell Sr., uh, he made a, Mark Ridley Thomas made a stunning, uh, hmm. uh, what do they call it in horse racing, a <laughs> photo finish for the 8th District City Council seat, yeah. and the family legacy oh, wow. expanded significantly. Hmm. That's my history, that's my heritage, that's what I'm rooted in. I've been paying attention to public policy despite my young age, mm -hmm. since I was a small child, yeah. because it was ingrained in our family. You were a member of your religious community, mm -hmm. you volunteered, you helped out, you advocated, you agitated, mm. you put yourself out there and you did what John Lewis said, get in good trouble. Wow. See, what's very powerful about you, and I'm using that word knowingly, is you're unfortunately 
one of a few, meaning a new generation of leadership. Yeah. But it's currently now because you're in a role of leadership. So yeah. it's not like you're on the way up. You're yeah. in that leadership. And if I'm correct, if you could clarify for us, you're one of the the youngest in this position since the the great. Can you clarify? Yeah. So Gus Hawkins. Uh, Gus Hawkins. The, excuse the, me. The, yes. Yeah, yeah. Gus this uh, Freeman Hawkins, nicknamed Gus Hawkins. Yeah. yeah. Uh, served a total of 59 years in public office wow. in the state assembly and in the U.S. House of Representatives. And um, he, when elected in 1934, uh, was in his mid-20s. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was elected. And I was the youngest African-American since him to be elected. Yeah, at 26, at correct? At 26, 26. Right. I think he may have been roughly the same age or a year or so younger. Wow. Um, so there have been 80 years where black mm -hmm. political leadership hadn't been as young yeah. as um, we could have been. And